Hello again, it's me from the future, inserting myself into your playlist of videos. I am making a video to go right here in between 7.7 .7 and 7.8. I don't know how you ended up here, but this is, that's the intended point of watching between these two in this tutorial series. So what I'm going to show you, but you could also just be here because you want to know how to add images to the P5 web editor. So uh, this is in a series about object-oriented programming, um, and in 7.8, this next video, I look at how to use an image in an object and then have multiple objects, each showing a different image, all sorts of fun. So, but in both of these videos, I'm using the Atom text editor and just opening up my JavaScript P5 sketch in the Chrome browser directly. And now I want to show you how to do this. Oh, and here I'm in the P5 web editor. So I'm going to create a new sketch. Oh, let me just save this uh, and create a new sketch. I'm going to hit OK because that's something else going on. And OK, so what I want to do is just look at what, let's say, I am, I've made this beautiful sketch. It is this beautiful rectangle. It is this lovely shade of gray. But what I really want is a kitten to appear there. Oh, I just so happen to have this nice directory of little tiny kitten images. I like this one. Um, and what I want to do is load this kitten JPEG into my sketch. So code-wise, there are two functions that I need to know about. One is a function called load image, and another is a function called image. So I might as well talk about those two while I'm here, although I think I'll probably talk about those in the next video as well. But more importantly, the purpose of this video is how do I actually get this image this image into this sketch. So once again, this is time for me to go over here and reveal, pull back the curtain of the P5 web editor. I've done this before when I made a second JavaScript file. We can see that there's also an HTML file and a style.css file. What goes on in these files are things that I get into in a future playlist about the P5 DOM library. So I want to look for that little arrow again and click Add File, just like what I did before when I added a new JavaScript file like bubble.js. But now, instead of typing in a new file, I actually am just going to drag a file over here into this region. I could also click here, and it's going to open up a, a kind of like finder thing. But I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to grab my kitten, this lovely little kitten. I'm going to drag it over here, and then it's going to upload. It is done, and we can see kittendo.jpg is now part of this project. You should realize, though, there is a limit. I can't remember if it's like 5 megabytes or 10 megabytes. You can't upload really big files to the web editor at present. You know, maybe in the future, we'll figure out ways of managing the data so that you can. OK, so now, just to, just to finish this off, um, I said I want to have a variable called image. And that's the image where I want to, that's the variable where I want to load the file into. And then when I, once I have that, I want to draw that image to the canvas. Of course, it's giving me an error now. Cannot read property width of undefined. Um, cannot read property width of undefined, but um, uh, because the image is not there. OK, so I need to actually load the image. And then you might think, like, OK, well, there's a load image function. So why don't I just use load image and, in quotes, reference the name of that JPEG? Well, this doesn't work because I cannot call p5 functions outside of setup or draw. Um, it doesn't actually know what a p5 function is. So what I could do is then say, all right, well, image needs to be a global variable. I'm over explaining this, but I think it's worth sort of noting all this. So let me put load image in setup. And there, it worked. There's the image of the kitten. Um, why did this work though? Weird. Let me run this again. Did you see how like the kitten wasn't there at first for like a little bit? Like what if I say here, no loop? The kitten doesn't appear. Even though the kitten's being loaded and set up and then being drawn and draw. So one of the things you have to start getting used to is the asynchronous nature of JavaScript. And this will come more and more as you go into the videos about working with data and the DOM library. But when we ask to load an image, it's not going to be immediately ready. It takes some time for it to go and grab those pixels and load them into memory. But P5, and there's ways of using something called a callback, which I will get to in a future video. But the best way for you to do this right now is to use a function called preload. And preload is a special function. It's kind of like the prequel to setup. Setup is where everything begins, but before setup, we have preload. And what preload does is it is a place where you can load any media or data assets and make sure they are ready before setup and draw happen. So in this case, even with no loop, that kitten's always going to be there. 
Um, and just incidentally, while we're here, we should note that you know, image, the image function drawing this particular image, which maybe I should be more clear about my variable naming and name it kitten. This is exactly like the rectangle function. I am drawing a rectangle at 0, 0. The only difference is I'm filling that rectangle with the pixels from that image. But I can do things like give it a width and a height. And you can see I've stretched the kitten. This could be, these could be variables. And you can see now I'm, and it's going to resize. It's just a rectangle. I could um, do things like, say, uh, x and have a variable called x. And I could say, you know, x plus plus. And now the kitten is slowly moving. <laughs> I could change the y value. So it's just another thing to draw that you can rotate and twist and color and turn and all that. And in the next video, if you are here, <laughs> if you happen to be watching this as part of this playlist, what I'm actually going to show you in the next video, you can sort of see it in the thumbnail, is to make a whole bunch of objects that are images and animate them around the window. Okay? So I hope help this clarify a little bit about using the P5 web editor with all these other surrounding videos. And uh, if I, if I <laughs> didn't get it right here or you're confused, uh, please let me know in the comments and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.